This question appeared on a video about the basics of working with shapes in Excel VBA, and what Dan wants to know is how to draw a straight line within a range object. Now, although this intro video does explain the basics of drawing shapes and setting their position relative to cells, it didn't explicitly talk about lines, and lines do work a little differently to some other auto shapes that we covered in this video. So to help demonstrate this, I've got a blank Excel workbook set up, and I've already created a new module and started a subroutine called Draw Lines. To begin with, drawing a line is a lot like drawing any other shape on a worksheet. We need to add the line to the shapes collection of the sheet object. To help with that, let's start by declaring a variable. I'm going to call mine sh, and it's going to hold a reference to a shape object. We can then set that variable to be equal to, and I'm going to refer to my sheet one object using its code name, and then refer to the shapes collection and use the add line method. If I then open up some round brackets, we can see there are four compulsory parameters we need to fill in. Begin X, begin Y, end X, and end Y. Just to quickly demonstrate what these values represent, just in case it wasn't already obvious, I've got a couple of basic diagrams set up. So any straight line has just got two points, and each of those two points requires two coordinates. The distance from the left-hand edge of the sheet to the point, and the distance from the top of the sheet to the point. So we've got begin x and begin y, end x and end y, representing the four coordinates we need. So if we wanted a straight vertical line, then the values of the x coordinates would be the same. If we wanted a straight horizontal line, the coordinates of the y values would be the same. So just to demonstrate how this works, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And I'm going to name these parameters explicitly on separate lines just to help, it, uh, help us read this later on. So we'll say begin x colon equals. I'm going to start it 10 from the left hand edge of the sheet. And then on the next line, we'll say begin y. And we'll say again colon equals. And let's set this to be, uh, well, again, 10 from the top of the sheet. And then we'll say end x colon equals 20 and then end y colon equals 20 as well. So this will give us a diagonal line sitting on the worksheet. Just to help the line stand out and make it a bit more obvious, I'm going to change a couple of the basic formatting properties. I'm going to say sh.line.4color.rgb equals, I'll spell RGB correctly, apologies for that, equals RGB hot pink, and then sh.line.weight I'm going to set that to be equal to 2. So having done that, let's run the subroutine. And we should see if we switch back to sheet 1 in the workbook, we've got a nice small pink line sitting um, on the sheet. Now, of course, what Dan wants to do is draw his line within a range on the worksheet. And to do that, we can make use of a few properties of a range. So let's say we want to draw our line diagonally across cell B2. Cell B2 has got a left property, which indicates the distance from the left of the sheet to the left of the cell, a top property, representing the distance from the top of the sheet to the top of the cell, and then a width and a height property as well. So we could make use of all those things if we switch back to the Visual Basic Editor. So we could set the beginning X position to say range B2 dot left, and we could set the begin Y position to be range B2 dot top. Let's just do a quick bit of copying and pasting here to save a bit of time. The end x position, we could do this in a couple of ways, I suppose. We could say range c2 dot left. So we'll draw the line up to the edge of cell c2. Alternatively, we could say range b2 dot left plus range b2 dot width. This seems like a bit of a more elaborate way of doing it, but it provides us with a couple of interesting possibilities a little later. And then likewise for the height of the, the line, or the uh, sorry, the, uh, the end position of the line vertically, we can refer to the range B2 dot top position plus range B2 dot height. So having done all that, if we now run the subroutine again, we'll end up with a new line which starts in the top left hand corner of cell B2 and ends in the bottom right hand corner. Just before we look at some other interesting possibilities, I'm going to write a quick bit of code that deletes all the shapes on this worksheet. Otherwise, things are going to get quite messy with all our lines drawn on top of each other. So heading back to the Visual Basic Editor, just after declaring that variable, I'm going to write a for each loop to say for each sh in sheet1.shapes. I'm simply going to say sh.delete. 
and then next sh. So that will loop through the shapes collection, deleting each one in turn before drawing our new one. So if we run this subroutine again now at this point, we'll see the original line has disappeared and our second line also disappeared before drawing the new line in its place. Now let's say that we wanted to draw this line horizontally, but starting halfway down the height of cell B2. We can do this fairly easily just using a bit of basic arithmetic to divide the height of the cell by 2. So if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, we can set the begin Y position to be equal to range B2.top plus range B2.height divided by 2. So I'm just going to quickly copy and paste here. And I'll put this in a set of round brackets as well. So range B2.height divided by 2. We can then do the exact same thing for the end Y position. If we want a horizontal line, then the Y coordinates should be equal. So having done that, we can run the subroutine again. And now our line is drawn horizontally halfway down the height of the cell. That halfway point is calculated relative to the current height of the cell at the point the line is drawn. So if we change the height of row 2 there just by clicking and dragging in the left hand side, when we run the subroutine again, we'll see that the halfway position is recalculated, so the line is drawn halfway down the cell again. Just to demonstrate how lines respond to changes in the width and height of cells, I want to redraw this line so it starts in the top left hand corner of cell B2 and ends in the bottom right hand corner of cell C3. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I'm going to change the begin Y position to begin at the top of cell B2. Then the end x position is going to be range c3 dot left plus range c3 dot width. And the end y position is going to be range c3 dot top plus range c3 dot height without dividing anything by 2 there. So once we've done that, we can run the subroutine again. And now the line is drawn diagonally across those two cells. By default, a line isn't drawn in a fixed position on the worksheet. It can both move and resize itself according to changes in other cells. So for example, if anything above or to the left of the line changes in terms of its width or its height, you'll see that the line moves in response. If any cell widths or heights change within the boundary of the shape up to and including the end of the shape, then the shape will resize itself. So you can see here the shape is resizing so that it still stays fixed to the bottom right hand corner of cell C3. And this includes the extreme end of the line as well. If I change the end of cell C3 or the bottom of row 3 there, you'll see that the line resizes itself too. Now you can influence that by changing the placement property of the shape. If I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, after I've changed some formatting properties, let's say sh.placement, and you'll see that there are three possible values. So there's free floating. Now this will ignore any moving and resizing options. So this will draw the line in a fixed position on the page. If we run that subroutine now, head back to the Visual Basic Editor, you'll see that the line doesn't move at all in response to any changes made to any cells at all. If I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, one of the other options there was to set this to XL Move and Move Only. So if I set that to Move and then run the subroutine again, we'll see that if anything above or to the left of the line changes, the line will move itself, but it won't respond to changes within the boundary of the line, so it doesn't resize itself when we change these things. The default option, and I think the most sensible one for us in this particular example, was Excel Move and Size. So if I set that back to that property, run the subroutine again, everything will now behave as it was earlier on. So I think that's probably enough information to answer Dan's original question. But while we're talking about lines, let's look at a couple of other interesting things we can do. For the next example, let's say we wanted to divide a cell up horizontally by drawing vertical lines at equal intervals along its width. To do this, I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I'm going to declare a few extra variables to help with this. So I'm going to declare a variable called i as integer, and we'll use this in a for next loop to loop a certain number of times. Then I'll declare a variable called divisions, also as an integer, and we'll use that to control how many uh, equal intervals we want to create horizontally along the cell. 
and then I'm going to use a variable called x as single. And we're going to use that to calculate the position in the cell, the horizontal position in the cell, to assign that to the begin x and end x parameters. So having done that, after we've finished deleting all of our shapes, let's begin our for next loop. I'm going to say for i equals 0, 2, and then I'm going to use the number of divisions. So before we create this loop, we'll need to choose how many divisions we want. So let's say just above that line, divisions equals four for this example. So because we're starting at zero, this loop is going to loop five times. So we'll end up with a line at the left-hand edge of the cell, and then one, two, three, and the final line will be at the right-hand edge of the cell. So five lines in total. So back in the Visual Basic Editor, after I've finished changing the properties of the shape, I'm going to say next i. And then I'm just going to indent those lines of code by highlighting them and hitting the tab key. So the first thing we'll do inside the loop is calculate the value of x. And to do this, we're going to say x equals, then we're going to refer to the value of the loop counter, i, and then multiply that by the width of the cell divided by the number of divisions we want. So in some round brackets, we can say range b2, dot width divided by the number of divisions. Finally, we can just use this value of x in setting the begin x and end x positions. So let's say begin x equals range b2 dot left plus the value of x. So the first time this loop goes round, we'll have multiplied the division by zero, so the end result will be zero. So this will place the first line at the left-hand edge of the cell. I'm going to use the same value for the end x parameter as well. And then for the begin y parameter, we'll set that to the top of cell b2. And we want to end that at the bottom of cell b2. So let's change the end y parameter to say range b2.top plus range b2.height. Okay, so having done all that, let's run the subroutine again. And we should see now that we get vertical lines equally spaced along the width of the cell. We can add the horizontal line using basically the same technique. Let's switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, and then let's add a variable that allows us to calculate the y value. So on the same line as dim x as single, I'll say comma y as single as well. And then inside the loop, just after we've calculated x, we can say y equals, then the calculation is pretty much the same. We just need to refer to the height of the cell rather than its width. So let's say y equals i multiplied by range b2 dot height divided by divisions. Then what we'll need to do is add another set of code to add the horizontal lines. So still within the loop, I'm just going to copy this chunk of code that adds the new line and then changes its formatting properties paste that in, and then we want to make sure that we don't add x to the left position. What we want to do is make sure that we set the end x to be equal to the left of the cell plus the width of the cell. So let's say range b2 dot width. And then for the top properties, we're going to refer to range b2 dot top and then add the value of y to that. And then likewise down here, we'll say range b2.top plus the value of y. We'll just use the same color and width, but of course you can modify those. You could have different horizontal and vertical formatted lines. But at this point, I'll just run the subroutine again. And now we've divided that single cell up into a little grid. To make this even more interesting, we could try to divide the cell up diagonally. And doing this requires a little more careful thought about the arithmetic involved. So if you imagine, first of all, drawing the line from the top left-hand corner to the bottom right-hand corner of the cell, we've then got to work in two different directions, so we'll need two sets of lines added in each time. So if we work upwards and towards the right, we'd have to increase the value of x but keep the value of y the same for the starting point, and then we'd need to keep the value of x the same but decrease the value of y for the end point. So the next point would then increase the value of x, keep the value of y the same for the start point, keep the value of x the same, but decrease the value of y for the end point. 
so let's have a quick look at how we can do that back in the Visual Basic Editor. So I want to make sure that the starting point keeps this code here. So we increase the left position working horizontally along the top row of the top edge of the cell. So these first two parameters can stay the same. Then the end X position, I want this to always be at the right hand edge of the cell. So that's going to be range B2 dot left plus range B2 dot width. So let's just change that there. Then for the end Y position, we need to work our way vertically upwards along the right hand edge of the cell. So to do this, we're going to say range B2 dot top plus range B2 dot height. And I'm going to put those in a set of round brackets and then subtract from that the value of Y. Okay. So doing the same thing for the other set of lines, we'd need to keep these first two parameters the same. So we're going to go from the left and then uh, the Y position will be the top plus Y. And then the end Y position is always going to be the bottom of the cell. So I'm just going to quickly copy and paste range B2 dot top plus range B2 dot height. And then the end X position, this is the one that's going to be working backwards from the right hand edge of the cell. So it's going to be range B2 dot left plus range B2 dot width minus the value of X. Okay, so let's have a look at what that ends up with. If we run the subroutine again, we'll have neatly divided up the, uh, the cell diagonally. Um, we probably added in one extra unnecessary line here. So both of those loops, or sorry, both of those set statements, when we add the lines, add the original diagonal division. So we do end up with one extra unnecessary shape, but we could fairly easily delete that with a bit of extra code. From this point, we're really just having a bit of fun playing around with basic arithmetic to calculate the start and end positions of each line. So just as one final, slightly more fun example, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And I'm going to change the number of divisions up to 10. And then for the first set of lines, I'm going to make sure that the begin X position is always the left hand edge of the cell. So we're, we're going to work vertically down the left hand edge for the start positions. So we'll say range B2 dot top plus Y for the begin Y position. And then for the end X position, we'll say range B2 dot left plus X. So we'll set the end position working horizontally along the bottom edge of the cell. So we'll say the end Y position is range B2 dot top plus range B2 dot height. Then for the second set of lines, the begin X position, I want to work horizontally along the top hand edge of the cell. So we'll say left plus X. And then the begin Y position is always going to be the top edge of the cell. And then the end X position is going to be B2 dot left plus B2 dot width. So the end is always going to end up at the right hand edge of the cell. And then the end Y position is going to be from the top plus Y. So it's going to work uh, vertically down the right hand edge of the cell there. I might just change the uh, the weight of the lines here as well down to one to make it a little easier to see the end results. And if we run the subroutine at that point, it creates a completely impractical and useless pattern, but it's kind of pretty and a bit of fun. So there we go. There's the basics of working with lines in VBA in Excel. Hopefully that's more than enough to answer Dan's original question. Um, thanks very much for asking it. Hope it was useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.